UFC Fight Island 4 wrapped up yesterday after being headlined by a matchup between former bantamweight queen and never-ending title challenger Holly Holm and the surging Mexican striker Irina Aldana. And whilst Holmes' cardio, straight left and well-timed leg kicking all deserve commendation, it was Aldana's complete inability to cut the cage that sealed her fate and all but guaranteed a loss from the first two rounds onward. To illustrate the value and meaning of cage cutting, here's the shape of the octagon. If you're being pressured onto the fence, you've got a couple of options to get back to the center of the cage. You can blitz straight forward, pushing your opponent back to the center forcefully. You can plant one foot and pivot around your opponent. You can square your stance, draw your opponent in, and hopefully move off in the direction that they don't expect. Or you can do what most people's initial instincts resolve to and move in a circle. If you're fast enough, you might be able to get back to the center before your opponent. But like any tool or strategy in MMA, circling around the cage is fallible. Ask Edson Barboza. Here, Edson begins circling, attempting to find some space and get back to the center of the octagon, but he accomplishes neither. He ends up in the same spot he started in, having alleviated none of the pressure. How did Kevin Lee make this happen? Cage cutting. By moving laterally or side to side, you can cut across the trajectory of the imaginary circle that your opponent is moving along cut off their path, intercept their momentum, and you can force an exchange or shoot for a takedown. Here's another great example. Chad Mendez here is being pressured against the fence. To alleviate the pressure, he tries to move to his left. Conor McGregor takes a long side step, moving laterally, and in doing so, he cuts off Mendez's escape route. Seeing as McGregor is pressuring in this fight, as he does in most of his fights, he wants to force the exchange, and this is how he does it. Unfortunately, this skill is not as widespread as it probably should be in mixed martial arts. Irene Aldana was proof of that during her fight with Holm. When she's on the back foot, as she was against Pewter Lova in their fight of the year candidate, Aldana can cut solid defensive angles. She pivots offline well, and she can jab whilst being pressured. But when she is the aggressor, as she was against Holm, it's a whole nother story. The fight was an open stance matchup, seeing as Aldana is orthodox and Holm is southpaw. Holmes' game works best when she is able to play counterfighter, as we saw against Ronda Rousey. When she is forced to be aggressive, she can be countered herself, seeing as so often, her only line of attack are blitzes down the middle, finished occasionally with a kick. Valentina Shevchenko lit Holm up with the check hook counter for every single blitz in their fight. So perhaps Aldama's first mistake was in trying to be the aggressor from the onset. This allowed Holm to do what she does best, get on her bike. Holm would circle to her left, plant her feet, and fire off the straight left. At various intervals, she would follow up the left with a committed blitz. And like any strong southpaw, she employed the threat of the straight left to land the body kick and high kick intermittently. All in all, Holm's game plan was solid, and she was able to maintain that over the distance. Only. Part of the reason this game plan was so successful is that Aldana essentially refused to cut the cage. As Holm would circle to her left, Aldana would follow along like a dog on a leash. Instead of cutting across Holm's path and putting herself straight in front of her opponent, she allowed Holm to circle into empty space, giving her ample opportunity to set her stance and fire off the straight left at will. Aldana was practically falling into these shots. This was the rhythm for 25 minutes. Aldana pushes forward, Holm circles to her left, Aldana follows. As she follows, she hits a left hand or a kick. That's not to suggest that Aldana landed absolutely nothing. Some left hooks here and there found their mark, her jab looked decent whenever Holm was actually directly in front of her, and she landed her fair share of kicks. But without the lateral movement necessary to cut Holm off, she never found any form of momentum. Holly was able to land consistently, and she ended the fight with some fearless aggression having already butchered Aldana. Even though she couldn't get the finish, her win was abundantly clear the second the horn sounded. It's a solid win for Holm and will presumably set up yet another title shot for the 38 year old. But ultimately, it's a damning indictment of Aldana's cage craft. 
With this loss, Aldana's hopes for a title shot within the next few years seem dashed, which is disappointing since for the most part, she is an entertaining fighter. Hopefully, she'll take notes for next time and come equipped with better lateral movement. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe and chuck a comment down below.